guys, my name is Tiffany and welcome or welcome back to my channel. A few months ago, I got a DM on Instagram asking me to recreate this Rodarte dress as seen on Selena Gomez and on Kendall Jenner. So in today's Upcycled by Little Toe, I'm going to show you how I made my version. I normally upcycle thrifted clothing in my videos, but I managed to find some beautiful secondhand fabric. So for the first time on my channel, I will be making this dress from scratch. Also, this Verdarte dress is called the Pink Daisy dress, which I thought was so cute and perfect because I made my Daisy a little version of her own. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and let's get started. I'm on a little trip, so my surroundings are a little bit different, but not to worry, I brought all of my filming and sewing equipment so that I could keep making content while I'm here, but I'm in this Airbnb and it's so cute, and I've got my little overhead and cutting station over here, and then over here I have my sewing station, and of course, the star of the hour, we have Daisy. Look at her, she's just being so cute. So let's get started. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using actual fabric to recreate this dress. I've been wanting to recreate this Rodarte dress for such a long time, but I've been struggling to find an item that I could use to recreate this dress because it requires so much fabric. But I came across this website, it's called A Thrifty Notion, and it's pretty awesome. They sell unused and unwanted fabrics. I found the perfect fabric to use for this project. It's this peachy pink rayon fabric, and I ended up buying four yards. I really love their mission, so if you guys are looking to source secondhand fabric, I'm gonna link their website down below. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the original Rodarte dress and just break it down a little bit. This dress retails for $2,600 and is currently sold out. It has a gorgeous sweetheart neckline and the front bodice is made from four pieces that are sewn together along these three seams. It also has oversized puff sleeves and has these dainty daisies sewn on as accents. This dress features an inverted V neckline and has a waistband that continues all the way to the back. It also has a flowy ankle grazing skirt. The back of the dress is pretty simple with an invisible zipper closure in the center back and the back of the skirt also has a very subtle train. I'm not gonna lie, I was struggling a little bit trying to figure out how to make the pattern for this bodice, but then I realized that it's actually really similar to the Mora dress that I made last year, so I'm gonna link that video down below if you haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to be using that pattern as a base, so let's get started. Also, I wanted to apologize because the footage for this video is all over the place. I started this video when I was back home, so this part of the tutorial is from not this location. Here is the pattern I used for the Mora dress. I'm basically going to split it into two sections, this top section and this bottom section. I start by tracing out the top section onto some paper, making sure I trace the seam allowance along the shoulder seam and armhole. From this point, I measure and mark at 4.5 inches. From that same point, I measure and mark at 3.5 inches along the shoulder seam. From that mark, I measure down and mark at 4 inches. Then, I connect these two points as well as these two points and add the seam allowance. Cut that out and here is the pattern for the top section and what it looks like compared to the original pattern. To draft the bottom section, I trace the original pattern again. Then, I use the top section to trace the angle of this seam, making sure I'm not copying the seam allowance but the placement of the actual seam. I'll also extend this line all the way across the original pattern. I'm lowering this side seam about 1 inch and freehand a new armhole to accommodate that change. I'm also going to draw a line here which is about 3 inches in length, making sure it is parallel to the side seam, creating a center front seam. Since I lowered the armhole, I'm extending the side seam down about 1 inch and then freehanding this curve. I'm going to shorten this seam slightly so I measure and mark at 1 inch from the end. Then, I join these two points creating the neckline. These sides already include seam allowance, so I'm only adding seam allowance to this new seam. Cut, and here are the front bodice pieces. The back pattern piece is going to be significantly easier. The original dress has a zipper closure in the center back, but I prefer my zipper closures to be on the side, so I'm going to be cutting my back piece on full. Here is the pattern I used for the Mora dress, and here is my modified pattern for this dress. As you can see here, I've lowered the armhole slightly so it matches the front bodice pattern. I've also cropped the entire piece by 1.5 inches and drafted the dart. I tweaked the shoulder seam slightly, making sure it matched the front bodice pattern. And like I mentioned earlier, I will be cutting this piece on fold. With my new pattern pieces, I went ahead and made a few mock-ups, and then I just tweaked it until I was happy with the way that it fit me. I have a love-hate relationship with mock-ups because it is so tedious, but it is such a great way to ensure that your garment fits you really well. This is the mock-up that fits me best, and here is the pattern that I had drafted. As you can see here, the differences are pretty minor. Using this pattern, Pattern, I cut out these pieces from the fabric. I'm adding pleats here to make these two pieces the same length. I use pins to pin the pleats in place. Then, I place both my pieces right sides facing, so and you'll have something that looks like this. I went ahead and made a mirrored piece, placed them right sides facing, sewed along the center front seam, and here is my front bodice piece. 
From the pattern I drafted, I cut out my back bodice piece and I've gone ahead and sewn the darts. I place the front piece right side spacing and sew along the shoulder seams to join the two pieces. I'm going to lay my bodice piece flat like so and I've also made a lining piece following the exact same steps. Place them right side spacing and sew along the entire neckline. I just made a rookie mistake and I sewed the right side of the lining to the wrong side of the shell. So I'm gonna have to seam rip the entire neckline and then I'll try this again. Take two was a success and I've made a little notch here so that this part of the neckline will lay nice and flat. Flip the top to the right side and you should have something that looks like this. I'm going to give the neckline a good press giving it a nice clean finish and I've also understitched the lining to the seam allowance. To finish the bodice, I've sewn two basting stitches to the front starting from the center front along the bottom joining the shell and lining pieces. Now I'll pull the loose thread creating these gathers on both sides. Then I measure to make sure both sides are even at 7.5 inches. For the skirt, I'm going to be making a half circle skirt and I don't have enough space to show you on camera but I will draw a diagram that will hopefully explain what I'm trying to do. The first measurement I need for the skirt is my waist radius. I take my waist measurement and divide that by 3.14 and I'll round this up to 9 inches. The second measurement I need is the hem radius. Take the desired length of your skirt, for me that's 36 inches, and add the waist radius to find the hem radius which is 45 inches. I'll use these measurements to make the half circle skirt. Starting with the front of the skirt, I'll lay the fabric out with the salvage edge horizontal and the raw cut edge vertical. From this corner, I'll measure and mark at 9 inches working my way across. This will be the waistline. Then from the same corner, I'll measure and mark at 45 inches, again working my way to the other end creating the hem. Because I want a symmetrical piece, I'll then fold this piece in half along this line. The front of the skirt is shaped in an inverted V, so from the original waistline, I measure and mark up at 2 inches. Then I'll join these two points with a line. This is the front skirt pattern piece and it will be cut on fold. Cut and you'll have a front skirt piece with an inverted V waist. For the back, I'll fold this piece in half like I did for the front to create a symmetrical back skirt piece. I'll use the same steps to create the waistline, but for the hem, I'll measure and mark at 45 inches here on this edge, but on this folded edge, I'll add 3 inches to that measurement. Then I freehand this curve, making sure the hem gets progressively longer towards the center back. This will be the back skirt pattern cut on fold. Cut and you should have a back piece with a subtle train. In case that didn't make any sense, the side seams will measure 36 inches and the distance between the waist and the hem in the center back will be 39 inches. Then I went ahead and cut out these pieces from the fabric. This was a little bit of a challenge since this material is not the most stable, but I found it helpful to pin it to the rug so it wouldn't shift as much. So I think I'm gonna call it a day because I'm getting really frustrated because this fabric is just so difficult to work with. It is so slippery and annoying right now and I'm getting really cranky which is making my work really sloppy so I'm going to resume this tomorrow. Hi Daisy! Come here! It is a new day, I am feeling rested and refreshed so let's finish this dress. Okay, yesterday I made the bodice and I cut out the pieces I needed for the skirt, but before I attach them to each other, I'm actually going to be making the pattern for the sleeves. The original dress has sleeves that are pretty puffy and they are definitely a statement, but I have pretty wide shoulders and really big sleeves tend to make me look a little larger than I actually am, so I'm choosing to make my sleeves a little more subtle, but I'm gonna show you how you can customize your sleeves to your liking. Using a roll of paper, I lay my bodice piece on top of it, making sure that this side is laying nice and flat. This is the front of the bodice and this is the back. Then I trace out the shape of the armhole, making sure to mark where the back seam of my sleeve and front seam of my sleeve will begin. From both of these points, I draw a line down and mark it 6 inches. To create a tapered sleeve, I measure and mark it 1 inch towards the center of the sleeve at the base on both sides. Connect these points creating these diagonal lines. Then join these two points at the base and here is our basic sleeve. I want to add a little bit of height to my sleeve, so I'm adding 2 inches to the highest point of the sleeve. For a more dramatic sleeve, you can add more height here. Then I freehand the sleeve cap curve and cut out the pattern. To make the sleeve puffy, I'm going to be using the slash and spread technique. The first thing I do is identify the center of the sleeve. At this point, I draw a vertical line. Now I'm drawing a total of 5 lines that are 1.5 inches apart and parallel to one another. I'll cut these lines as close as I can to the end and you should have something that looks like this. Using another piece of paper, I lay out the slashed sleeve and spread it out symmetrically. The center gap measures 2 inches, the next one measures 1 and 3 quarters of an inch, and this one measures 1 and a half inches. I do the same for the other side. If you're going for a puffier sleeve, you can just spread this out even wider. Then I trace out the outline and clean up the sleeve cap curve. Cut and here is the final sleeve pattern. 
Now that the pattern for the sleeve is done, let's move on to the waistband, which is another part of the dress that I'm kind of struggling with. I can't quite figure out how to attach the waistband to the dress, especially because I moved the zipper from the center back to the side. I think I have an idea, so let's hope that it works. I'm going to start by sewing my skirt pieces together. Here is the front skirt piece and I'm just laying the back skirt piece right side spacing and I'm only going to sew along this side, which is the right side of the dress and you'll have something that looks like this. Once sewn together, this is what the skirt pieces should look like. This is the seam that joins the two pieces with this being the front and this being the back of the skirt. For the waistband, I'll cut out two strips of fabric, this longer one and this shorter one that will be sewn together here. To mimic the look of the original dress, I'll sew some gathers in the center front, as well as here in the center back. I've gone ahead and cut out these two strips of fabric for the waistband. I cut out a piece of fabric that is 7 inches tall and then folded it in half lengthways and pressed to create each waistband piece. As you can see here, it is the same for the longer piece as well. Now, to find the angle of the center front seam, I'm using my bodice as a guide. I place the smaller waistband piece along this slope of the bodice and mark the center point. Then, using my ruler, I extend the center front seam of my bodice down to the waistband, creating the center front seam. Go ahead and cut this out. Now, I'm flipping this piece over and placing it on the longer waistband piece so that the angle of this new center front seam will be mirrored. Cut, and when you flip the smaller piece back to the right side, these two angled cuts will create the inverted V waistline. Before I sew these two pieces together, I'm going to sew gathers on the front and back of each waistband piece and it should look something like this. Now I'm unfolding these pieces, placing them right sides facing and then sewing together. Once attached, give it a good press and it should look something like this. To attach the waistband to the skirt, I identify the center point of the front of the skirt and line that up with the center front seam of the waistband. Now I'm placing the waistband on the right side of the skirt and pinning it in place. I'm working in sections so for now I'm only going to pin and sew the waistband to the front of the skirt. Moving on to the back. Again, I identify the center of the back of the skirt and make a mark. I line the waistband with the waist of the skirt and mark on my waistband the placement of the center back. Before sewing the rest of the waistband to the skirt, I'll go ahead and create the gathers in the center back of the waistband. As you can see here, I've sewn three very short rows to create the gathers. Now I'll pin and sew the waistband to the back of the skirt. To be completely honest, I don't really love the way this gathered part looks in the back, but I don't really know a different way to do this, so if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Before sewing the skirt to the bodice, I realized I had made a mistake and needed to seam rip the original basting stitch I had sewn earlier. I wanted the lining and shell to be separate, so I sewed separate basting stitches to the lining and then the shell, making sure they were then gathered to the same length. I also sewed the side seams together along the right side for the shell and the lining, but for the left side, I've only sewn the top of the side seam about one inch and I've done the same for the lining. Now I'm going to sew the skirt to just the shell fabric of the bodice. Here is what the dress is looking like so far. You can see I've left this opening for the zipper. I've also gone ahead and cut out my lining skirt pieces. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and sew it to the bodice lining. Okay guys, you know me and you know how particular I get when I'm sewing and I'm looking at the dress and I'm just not happy with how the waistband is laying on the right side. It's sponging a little bit and it's pulling and not laying as flat as I'd like it to. Um, so I think instead of the long section of the waistband that wraps around the right side of my body, I think I'm going to cut it and make a seam. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I mean. This was the long section of the waistband and I've gone ahead and cut it and sewn the front section to the side seam of the skirt. Here is the back of the dress and you can see that because I cut the waistband and made that adjustment in the front, the waistband is now too short in the back. So I'm going to seam rip this off and replace the back section with a longer waistband. Okay, take two, and I am so much happier with the way that this is laying on my body. And just to clarify, in case it was confusing, what I did was I made sure that these two pieces matched in length, and then I cut it in half, and then I also extended the back of the waistband to make up for this moving and then I sewed them together with a seam here. This dress is definitely testing my patience a little bit and it's one of the harder dresses that I've attempted to make and definitely not for the faint of heart, but I just checked my subscriber count and I'm officially over 10K and I'm so excited. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you for supporting me and I cannot wait to keep making content. Okay, back to the dress. You can see here that I've already sewn the skirt lining to the bodice lining and I've left an opening for the zipper. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for the outer skirt. 
Here is the opening I left for the zipper for the shell and the lining, and I've also ironed on some fusible interfacing to the shell to add some stability. Now I'm going to install my invisible zipper to the left side and you should have something that looks like this. Using the sleeve pattern that I made earlier, I went ahead and cut out the piece I needed from the fabric. Now I'm folding the sleeve right side spacing and sew along this seam. Next, I'm going to hem the sleeve by folding over twice and sewing. I'm going to draw a line on this folded edge of the sleeve, so I'm going to mark on the bottom and top of this fold. Using these marks as a guide, I draw a line. Now I'm measuring and marking at 4 inches, and I'm doing the same on the other side along this seam. I'm going to sew a basting stitch from this 4 inch mark and it should look something like this. I'm going to pull on the loose thread until it measures 2 inches in length and repeat on the other side. Now I'll secure these gathers by sewing a straight stitch over them. I've done the same for both sides. I've also sewn a basting stitch along the sleeve cap curve from this point to this point and I'm going to go ahead and pin the sleeve to the dress. As you can see here, most of my sleeve is pinned to the dress and now I'm going to pull this loose thread and gather the rest of the sleeve until it matches the armhole and then sew to secure. Can we also take a moment to appreciate how neat the inside of the dress looks as well? I'm flipping the dress to the right sides and here is what it should look like now. Sew on the other sleeve and we are almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and hem this dress now and I've already talked about how difficult this fabric is so I'm gonna show you guys a little trick that I use to hem fabrics like this. I start by sewing a straight stitch about a quarter of an inch from the raw edge of the hem working my way all around the hem of the dress. Here I have my skirt wrong sides up and I'm using the stitch as a guide to fold the hem over and iron that down again working my way around the hem. Then I'll use the iron fold as a guide and fold over once more. Now I'll sew that down with another straight stitch and you should have a really clean finished hem that looks like this. Repeat with the lining. Before I show you guys what the dress looks like on, I wanted to quickly mention that I did not overlock any of the raw edges. This material is just so delicate and I didn't want to add any unnecessary bulk to the dress, but I think I will be buying some liquid anti-fray sealant and go over all of the raw edges. It's finally time for Daisy's dress and I did make her dress while I was back in New York, so let's cue the footage. Using the pattern I use for all of Daisy's dresses, I cut out the pieces I need and then sewed them together. This is a fancy dress, so I also made a lining. I'll place them right side spacing and sew along these three sides. Flip it to the right side and it should look something like this. Now I'm going to finish the armholes and here is what it looks like on the wrong side. For the skirt, I cut a long strip of fabric with these curved edges and then sew a basting stitch to create these ruffles. Place it right side spacing and sew to the shell of the bodice. Now fold the raw edge of the shell and lining under, sandwiching the skirt and sew. Last step is to sew on the velcro and here is Daisy's finished dress. Here is my completed version of the Rodarte Daisy dress. As you can see here, I decided not to add the flowers to the sleeves or center of the waistband, but I really love how this turned out and I think it's so dressy in a really understated way. The silhouette is so flattering and the flowy skirt and subtle train are just a dream. You guys all know I can be a little bit extra, so you won't be surprised that I also decided to make Daisy and I matching floral crowns. Here is the final look and it's definitely one of my favorite makes. If you want to see more photos of Daisy and I in our matching outfits, make sure you follow me on Instagram at LittleToe. This dress was definitely a little bit challenging for me, but I learned a lot along the way and I'm so happy with how it turned out. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I love reading all of the comments, so please let me know what you thought and if you have any suggestions on what I should make next. As always, thank you so much for watching.